Omar, the Pact of Omar. I don't know if anybody of you know about that. <clears throat> Along with any member of of any Muslim group, their subjugated Christians also had to agree to not build houses overtopping the houses of Muslims. They can't their house can't be taller than a Muslim's house. That might impair or imply a higher status. You know, back in the medieval era, Islamic heavyweights still um, who are still revered by a lot of Muslims, especially these radicals, had the same philosophy that's being carried on still today. According to the Islamic overview, Christians cannot bet cannot be better than Muslims. And if they are, despite all the obstacles and Islamic law says they cannot do anything that is above or beyond any Muslim. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, Somalia is also <laughs> Is also doing the same thing. Before I tell you the story out of Somalia, you know, and if you know that, if you know the history of Somalia, <sighs> some years ago, Somalians were butchered by Muslims, and I mean absolutely butchered, and the world stood by and did nothing, the same as they're doing today. Let me play you this little clip about these four Christians that were beheaded in Somalia. Turning now to Somalia, where four more Christians have been executed by radical Islamists in that East African nation. International Christian Concern, a human rights agency, reports members of the Al-Shabaab extremist group kidnapped and beheaded the believers late last month. The four worked for an organization helping orphans in southern Somalia. A spokesman for Al-Shabaab said the workers were guilty of abandoning Islam. An eyewitness told ICC the four Christians were given the chance to renounce their faith in Jesus Christ and to embrace Islam. They refused, even though the terrorists promised to release them. Al-Shabaab has been waging war against the tiny Christian population in Somalia. It's seeking to overthrow the government and establish an Islamic state. There is... All right, well, do you, does that name sound familiar to you, Al-Shabaab? Does that strike a bell? Do you say, where have, where have I heard that? Well, I'll tell you where you've heard that. <clears throat> when I did the program on our open borders, when they were catching terrorists from Iran and Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia pouring across our southern border right along with the Mexicans, what was a prominent name? El Shabab. El Shabab terrorists are pouring across our border. Now, <clears throat> I read a story this morning. I, I didn't load it up, but they're saying that there's over 800 secret society of these terrorists, just like I reported before on this past program about our open borders, who are pouring across our border. They're setting up training camps and sleeper cells. They're right here in America. What's really interesting about this is not only that our, does our president refuse for some reason to go to Israel and, and visit Israel, even though he claims to be pro-Israel, but he refuses to close our border, even though the State Department, Homeland Security, the Border Patrol, and Congress, Congress in session has told everyone in Congress that these terrorists are pouring across the border. They provided proof. But these terrorists are pouring across our southern border, and they refuse to seal our border. Now, for those of you who are saying that, well, it's too big of a border to seal, there's no way to seal it. <clears throat> well, do you remember that we just sent a bunch of fighter jets to Egypt? Now, when we did that, President Obama and Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State at the time, went over there and told them that, not to worry about uh, Gaza or Israel or any of those border things because Americans were going to come over there. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers was going to come over there and seal their border, was going to seal their border. Now, how is it that 
we can go over to Egypt and seal the border over there, but we can't seal our own border. See, but people don't put two and two together to see this kind of hypocrisy. And this is blatant hypocrisy. This is proof that they're lying to us. They're leaving this border open on purpose. How can they seal someone else's border, but we can't seal our own? This is just common sense. You don't even really have to pay a lot of attention to, to see these hypocrisies, these lies. Well, you know how it goes with them. When they start lying, once you tell one lie, then there's a long series of lies that you have to tell to legitimize that one lie. And they're just losing track. You know, they're losing track of all of the lies that they tell, and, and eventually the, the truth starts coming through the cracks. And this is one of those truths that came through a crack. They can seal someone else's border in another country, but they can't seal our own. Well, here's what happened in Somalia. As our brothers and sisters in Christ are being persecuted. Al-Shabaab extremist beheaded a Christian last Friday because of his conversion to Christianity on suspicion he was a spy. After the beheading, the body was left on a beach. The relatives of the, be of the beheaded were afraid to pick up the body of the man for fear of meeting the same fate. They can't even go in and recover the body. Last November, Islamic extremists from Somal uh, Somalia's Al-Shabaab militants killed a Christian at the coastal city of uh, Barwa, accusing him of being a spy. They beheaded 25-year-old Farhan Maji. After monitoring his movements for six months, they stalked the guy. They stalked him. Christian sources said that Morris drew suspicion when he returned in Somalia's lower uh, Shabel region in December of 2011 after spending time in Kenya. Underground Christians in Somalia um, are the ones that are telling this to who's reporting it, the Morning Star News. Now, Kenya's population is nearly 83% Christian, according to Operation World, while Somalia is close to 100% Muslim. A crowd that was assembled in the coastal city on Friday to watch the slaughter of Morse. His body was split into two, then carried away, only to be dumped near the beach of Barwa City. A Christian source who witnessed the murder is, is the one that reported this to the Morning Star News. Other witnesses, Muslim, independently described the same scene. They said the Christian witness told Morning Star News. The Islamic extremists accused Morris of being a spy for foreigners and of embracing, quote-unquote, foreign religion of Christianity. This was for embracing the foreign religion of Christianity. They cut him in two. Loved ones of the deceased did not risk immediate recovering the body, fearing that the militants would consider them guilty by association and kill them as well. Oh, a source said a Muslim fisherman who came upon Morse's body lamented. He said, what a brutal murder. Why did the El Shabaab kill this man? Did he deserve such a brutal death because he associated with the Christian people in Kenya? Morris, who was studied in Kenya, had a small cosmetic shop in Barwa. He traveled to Kenya on business last year. He converted to Christianity in 2010 while in Kenya. He said, I am uh, saddened by the death of my friend, said underground Christian, who encouraged him in his faith after the young man had returned from Kenya. The leader of the underground church in Somalia also confirmed the murder. Barwa also uh, Brava had come under control of El Shabaab rebels fighting the government with a population of 545,000. The city is an international airport in the uh, lower Shabelle region, 113 miles southwest of the capital. My goodness. Well, 
You know, uh, this is also happened in Tanzania. I want to I want to share this with you. Tanzania. Pastor of the Assembly of God Church in Tanzania. This is <laughs> this is incredible. He was beheaded when a group of religious extremists attacked Christians in the church, escalating hostility toward Christians in various places in Africa causes us to give great concern for our brothers and sisters and especially our pastors. AG World Missions Regional Director for Africa, Mike McLaffin, said our prayers are with the family and pastors of these African churches as well as other pastors of Pentecostal Assembly of Gods in Tanzania and missionaries from the Pentecostal Assemblies of God in Tanzania. <clears throat> There's also been attack on missionaries from uh, Canada who are missionaries in East Africa. The AG General Superintendent encouraged Christians in Tanzania to remain Christ-like in their faith. Our response as a church is not one of violence and hatred, reflecting the atti attitude of those committing such crimes and that of Christ, and reflecting his image by loving and praying for those who humiliate and persecute us, not holding sins against them, he said. Well, this has also happened in the Philippines, where they have kidnapped a Christian teacher there, held him for ransom. And when they didn't get the ransom money, they beheaded him. Militants in the Philippines have killed a head teacher from this school in Holo. The man was snatched from this area on the southern island. An official from the army said the man was beheaded. His decapitated head was dumped by a petrol station. I saw people gathering there and I went over to ask them what it was about. They said it was a decapitated head. I asked them if they could open the sack, and they said that it might be too much for me. And when I did take a closer look, it really was a decapitated head. The rebels from the Abu Sayyaf group had demanded a ransom of around 42,000 US dollars. The group, which has links to Al-Qaeda, is active in Holo and nearby Basilian. They're known for kidnapping and beheading hostages. Filipino President Gloria Macabal Arroyo has sent troops to the region to combat Abu Sayyaf. Only last week, hundreds of troops were deployed to the southern region of Mindanao to help secure the release of a priest, also kidnapped by rebels. Basra Fahim, Reuters. And this priest is probably next. They're, they're kidnapping Christians. They're not taking other Muslims, and they're not taking... Atheists, they're only taking Christians because they're more than happy to behead Christians. <clears throat> Somalia is really where it's growing, and it's growing quick. I can't believe how quick it's grown in Somalia. Now, there's reports that at least 10 Christians were abducted and killed for their faith, sometimes by beheading. In Somalia, it's the top 10 nations that aggressively persecute Christians, according to a new report from Open Doors to USA. The organization today released a watch list. Now, this watch list, <laughs> which cited North Korea as the seventh, for the seventh straight year as the nation that persecutes Christians more intensely than anyone else around the globe. Somalia rose from 12th in 2008 to fifth this year because of their level of attacks there. According to the report, which noted two of the worst three nations as Saudi Arabia, Iran, nations governed by Islamic Sharia law, and seven of the top ten nations fall into that category. Paul Easterbrook, the organization's minister at large, says that Certainly, um, all of these nations are impacted significantly by Sharia. This is all about Sharia. 
Uh,